welcome to the Bukchon district of Seoul, South Korea. It is here where you can find some traditional Korean architecture, these really impressive roofs. And looking at these buildings, it might be natural to conclude that, well, they just don't make them like they used to. That in the old days we used to build with much better quality. But there is a question of is that really true? Because we're not looking at all the homes that existed back then, we're looking at a select subset. That group that has survived to the present day. So you would say that it'd be pretty logical that these homes would be the best built and the best maintained so they don't really give you an idea of the way things were built. And we get that same impression for a lot of things. So this is known as the survivor bias, and it comes into play with a lot of our reasoning where we're looking at samples which are not complete. The classic example of survivor bias comes from World War II, when the British were losing so many bomber aircraft when they flew over occupied territory. They were shot down so often that the British decided something needed to be done. They needed to add armor to these aircraft. But of course, they couldn't just add armor all over the aircraft because that would make these planes a lot heavier and then that would inhibit their ability to fly out uh, and get to their targets. So they could only add armor to select areas of the craft where that would provide the greatest benefit. So they did a survey of all the planes that had come back and they noted down where those planes had been shot. And then the thinking was, we well, just add the armor there where the planes are getting shot and that should help protect more planes. Of course, this is a terrible idea because the aircraft that you're looking at are the survivors. They're the ones who have made it back to you. It's the ones that you don't see. Those are the ones whose hits you need to protect against. But, but how are you to know where those aircraft were hit because you never get to see them again? Well, the answer is you kind of assume that the aircraft are getting hit randomly and so the ones that are coming back to you are getting hit in places that are not vital, that, that don't cause them to crash. So the places where they're not getting hit are the places that need the armor. It seems counterintuitive if you're not thinking about survivor bias, but of course once you realize that you're looking at a very selective surviving subset, it is quite obvious that you need to protect the places on the planes, the survivors that are coming back uh, unharmed because those are the critical areas of the plane. There was another study published in 1987 about cats falling from high-rise buildings in New York City. Apparently that was a pretty common thing, which makes sense. A lot of high-rise buildings, a lot of cats. In fact, there were so many that scientists could do statistical analysis on how bad the cat's injuries were depending on which floor they fell from. Now what was found was basically what you'd expect. The higher up they fell, uh, the worse their injuries. So falling from the sixth floor was worse than falling from the third floor. Totally makes sense. But here's where it gets weird. Beyond the seventh floor, the injuries actually decreased. They decreased a lot. So it was actually better for a cat, say, to fall from a 20th story than from the sixth story. Now that doesn't really seem to make sense. But scientists hypothesized that what was happening was that cats take about five or six stories to reach terminal velocity. That speed where they're no longer accelerating because their drag, the air resistance, is equal to their weight. And so beyond that, they're not speeding up anymore, and in fact, they can relax. So if they fall from 10 or 15 stories, they've got some time to relax after reaching terminal velocity, and the theory goes, uh, they land nicely and they bounce and they don't suffer as many injuries as if they fell from a lower height and they were still kind of accelerating as they went into the ground. Now this theory might be true or might have a bit of truth in it, but survivor bias may also come into play here because of course if a cat fell from say 20 stories and turned out to be just a splat on the pavement it would never have made it into the emergency rooms where these statistics were collected. So yet again, we have this clear bias in the data. It would only be cats that had really survived their fall from a high height that would make their way into the data. But survivor bias is not just this little quizzical statistical oddity. I think it also has important implications for how we live our lives. For example, a lot gets written about how people like Steve Jobs or Bill Gates or the guy who founded Dell, uh, how they dropped out of college and then 
this is suggested as, you know, something that really bright young uh, people should do. They should drop out of college because only there, with your drive and your passion, you know, you can make it, make it work. You don't need a college education, right? That's basically the message of these successful people. But of course, what that excludes is all the people who dropped out of college and weren't very successful. And in fact, if you do look at the entire sample, you find the people who stay in college are much more successful, they make more money, and they uh, seem to lead more successful lives. They're less likely to default on loans. So when we start collecting up people who win and then trying to find commonalities, we often get into trouble. Uh, there was a guy who wrote a book called Good to Great, where he identified uh, 11 great companies based on their performance over 40 years on the stock market. They had outperformed the market over 40 years. Now, the thing is, after the publication of his book, people have tracked how successful those companies were, and six of them, six of the 11 in the following 10 years, underperformed the market. So the point being that this way, this kind of hindsight bias of, of looking at who's been successful to this day may not really reveal the quality of that thing that you're looking at, may reveal a little bit about luck. The most troubling aspect of survivor bias hit me one day when I was discussing the fairness or otherwise of life. I mean, is it really a meritocracy where those with the greatest skills and work ethic end up being the most successful? My friend said he felt like it was, that to him the world was fair. And it was then that I realized this is another one of those survivor bias phenomenons. It's only because you're successful, because you survived, that the world seems fair. And if you had worked equally hard and just not got anywhere and not become successful, then the world would feel much more unfair. But of course, it's those people who are successful who can tell themselves that story, that their outcome is the result of their hard work, their ingenuity, uh, their perseverance, and maybe to a degree it is. But also, maybe to a degree, there is luck in there. And for other people who work just as hard, they have less luck, and they end up on the downside of, of fortune. And of course, it's the people who are successful who then get to make the rules. They have all the resources, they get the influence, and what do they say about people who aren't successful? Do they attribute it to luck? Or are they more likely to just say, no, success comes down to the hard work that I put in? That's maybe the worst result of survivor bias. It's the survivors who get to make the rules. Now, since this is the internet, I know it's going to be misinterpreted, so I'm saying this explicitly at the end. I'm not talking about communism, I'm not suggesting we should all be part of a big hippie commune. I am just suggesting that the data that we're working with, the samples that we see, are not the whole picture. We are frequently looking at survivor samples, so we need to think about the things that live beyond that. That's all I'm saying. Consider that the data set you have is incomplete, and incomplete in a particularly biased way.